starts the next day filing his emergency application. Why? Because he's got to get in front of this because he doesn't know what Corey said. The defendant does not care about Corey. He cares about controlling the narrative. At 11.43, the defendant says, why are you ignoring me to Brianna? And she explains to him, and this is later that night on the first, my phone died and I just got a charger. I am at the hospital because the CCMP spoke to doctors and they told me to come here. You could have come here from the beginning. You said, no, drop him off. We could have taken turns the whole time. I'm not doing anything wrong. Stay up and I'll drop him off soon as we're done. She writes, you're not going to stay awake. At 12.48 a.m., she writes, how are you going to go to court and say anything about me keeping him? You won't even stay up for me to drop him off. I'm offering right now. Defendant just doesn't respond. The next message is not until 6 a.m. the next day. Brianna had to take Corey back because she has to comply with the court order. The state submits that Dr. Ong corroborates evidence that Corey was murdered. Dr. Ong is a pediatric emergency room doctor at Jersey Shore. He sees Corey less than 24 hours before Corey dies. Corey is admitted to the emergency room, not the hospital, just the emergency room at 9 p.m. Corey was afraid to answer Dr. Ong's questions. He is described as scared. He does a head to toe examination. His chest exam is normal. He is not in respiratory distress. He is not wheezing. There's no murmurs. There's no hypoxia. There is absolutely nothing.